All right, I'd like to move ahead now and uh, do something we've not done here in the school, but like I said, we've done it many times in other settings, and that is to sketch our inheritance. Now, you've got a big inheritance. It's a huge, and it's bigger than you can possibly know. Uh, it's like the children of Israel going out of the wilderness into the promised land. And God said, this is too big for you. You can't take this all at once. If you did take it all at once, the beast of the field would overtake you. So I'm going to give it to you little by little. First thing we got to do is cross the Jordan. Okay, we got that, God. We're over here now. What do we do? Okay, the first assignment is take Jericho. Okay, God, I think we got it. And the second assignment is take AI. Okay, God, we got this all down. We know what they're doing now. Here we go. Whammo, and we got egg on our face big time. And we got to go back to the drawing board and get real with God. We got to find out what's going on, get that cleaned up, and then we can begin taking city by city until we've taken the whole inheritance. Okay, I am confident. I do not know the magnitude of my inheritance. I don't think anybody does. But we are sure having fun at the edge of the River Jordan. <laughs> We've gotten over on the other side, maybe. And we're building a monument and we are having a just a hoot nanny and enjoying the good time. And we're asking Father to give us more understanding of where to step our foot. And that was the prophecy that Moses spoke over Joshua. Everywhere you place your foot, I will give you authority. How do you place your feet in new territory? Well, you have to go there. You have to visit it. You have to somehow make your presence known and then I believe the issue of possessing it, big word, possessing that land that you just visited has to do with establishing it in your heart and mind and the overflow that comes out of your mind to populate that area. In other words, get familiar with it, learn how to traverse, to walk through it, to engage with it, activate with it, so what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to just walk us through a little intimate time. Oh, oh, well, that kind of surprised me. Uh, a little intimate, intimate time with the Lord. And I'm going to invite you then to either tag with me, tag along with me, or tune me out. And if you're on your own enjo uh, uh, enjoyable experience, then do that. But if you're not sure, just hang with me and draw or sketch what comes to mind. I'm not saying draw what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. God has territory that is uniquely yours. So if my words inspire a picture or a thought or a concept, then do your best to put it into sketch in front of you. Now, you may say, well, I don't have anything today. Well, then think about the last week. Like, for instance, uh, it was just a few days ago where I was on a Zoom, and I had a, a one of my more clearer uh, heavenly experiences, and it was very vivid. And so I think that's what I'm going to draw today. In fact, I've got some rough edges of it already put down on paper. And I'm just going to ask the Lord to give me more understanding, more clarity, so that it becomes more real to me, so that I can live in that reality. Are you with me? Okay. I have a feeling it's already getting on you, some of you. Good job. And th isn't that wonderful about God? Isn't he just so good about that? Just makes you fall in love with him over and over. And, and falling in love with him gets easier and easier. It's just 
it doesn't take a hard preached sermon anymore. <laughs> Thank God for those, but golly, we're getting more sensitized. That's a good thing, I'm confident. Okay, so I'm just going to step in now. God may take you to a throne room experience. And that may be very formal. You may see thrones, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and you sitting there. Or it may be very informal. You may be in a seat in your living room. Or out in a wooded park, secluded nature setting. That feels so cozy. So inviting. And so you draw whatever the Lord is highlighting for you in your own personal experience. There's no right or wrong about this. This is very personal. And, uh, and every one of us, it'll be right. Okay? Father, we already feel your stirring. It feels good to be touched by you. As a song, feels uh, feels good to be loved by you. We love the way you love us and you activate our hearts and you unlock our minds, our golden senses, and sometimes our natural senses and our golden senses work in tandem. They work together. Ephesians says, Oh, that you would illuminate the eyes of our imagination. Jesus, you're the most wonderful elder brother sticks closer than a brother even and you love unlocking the heavenly places as you said scripture says we're seated with you now right now in heavenly places Holy Spirit you've always been so good at bringing us to Jesus and bringing us to Father and making them look so good in our eyes. You make them look famous in our eyes. And you do so well at that that we find ourselves falling in love with them over and over and over again. I keep Falling in love with you over and over and over and over again. Oh, and you open up new territories, new understandings that unlock our love for you. We didn't know that we had that capacity that just keeps enlarging the capacity to love you more. I guess it's because we're able to feel your love for us more. <laughs> and the more you love us, the more we are capable of loving you. We didn't think this thing up. We weren't the first one to think it up. You did. And you're doing so good. Father, we love being with you and feeling just your presence around us or your arm around our shoulder or the brush of your cheek against ours or the pat of your hand upon our head and you say something so simple like, Good boy, Marky boy. Add a boy. And that's everything. My father, 
his DNA gets activated in me. Your DNA gets transferred. And any that's the DNA that's latent and has been dormant inside of me gets awakened. Oh, this is a most wonderful experience that continues to open up and open up and open up. In your presence, there's the greatest of joy. It's where real happiness begins to manifest. And we're learning to practice that happiness. Oh, and expect that happiness. And realize that's the, the predictable result of being in your presence. But then you say, at your right hand, at your place of favor, which is your right hand, there are pleasures and pleasures and pleasures and more pleasures forever. And Jesus, some of us are seated on a log in a most wonderful, idyllic setting. Some of us are seated in some heavenly surrounding mansions and streets of gold emerald rainbows. Some of us are walking hand in hand with you on a very inviting path. And nature is singing praises over us. Nature is applauding. The trees of the field clap their hands. And nature sings with eager expectation as it sees the sons of God come into maturity and begin to find our place truly being manifested on the earth. Father, you are coloring our world so wonderfully. These heavenly places are not just far off distant concepts anymore. But they're becoming realities that we relish. Oh, they're tasty. They're scintillating. And they're inviting, drawing us back in again and again. We've learned to love these heavenly places. We've learned to enjoy your face, your eyes, your touch, your voice your approval. Oh, there was a day when we might have been a little fearful of those things because oh, we just didn't understand your heart yet. But most of those vestiges of fear are being driven out. Huh. Maybe that's what perfect love does. It makes us fear less. Even expectant and eager. We love your tenderness and gentleness with us. Your voice is soft 
and your touch is warm. It makes our hearts come into security. We feel secure like we've never felt before. And it's only going to lead to more. You're the best leader, Father God. You're the best leader. You're the best dreamer. You dreamed up these 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 pathways for us. You dreamed up this whole heavenly places thing. You dreamed that up for us. And that used to be only your territory. But you always had the intention to give it to us. To share it with us. To co-everything with us. To co-seat and co-rule and co-create. Co-govern. <laughs> How about co-leap and co-skip on the mountains? I wonder what other dreams are in your heart, Father. I wonder what other rooms of pleasure. What are they going to look like? Where will they take us? How will they grip us, captivate us, awaken us, and empower us? How different will we be when the sleeping part of us is awakened? Oh, we feel like a sleeping giant right now that's not very much aware of the magnitude, the bigness of who we are. We've just got the first edges of understanding. And it seems so real and so good. And we're somehow aware that there's a lot more of me that is waiting to be awakened. Wow, Father. And your dreams cover and encompass all that you see that has to do with me. However big I am in your eyes, you have dreams for every part of that. And you're excited about us walking into the realities of me and you. Thank you, Father, for revealing the heavenly places to us helping us to become familiar and skilled and to learn our authority in those areas. We're so proud of you, Heavenly Father. Jesus, we are mighty proud of you. Holy Spirit, kudos, kudos, kudos. Thank you. We love you. Amen. So, I sketched before we started today a little bit of something I saw a few days ago. And I'll explain it and... Uh, uh, then I would invite you, if you care to, to show and to explain what you sketched. And you don't have to. There's no pressure, obviously. But sometimes it's helpful to, to voice it because it helps to authenticate it, helps to establish 
the validity or the realness of it. So this might be a little difficult and of course I'm not an artist but here I am right here under this side and I'm standing on the shore of a big body of water out here. Now ever since I was a child I love swimming and when I swim I actually love swimming underwater more than on top of water. I could hold my breath pretty long and and uh, you know sometimes it would concern people why isn't Mark coming up? I, I don't know I just love being underwater. And so you can see here that I'm standing on the shore and then I'm diving in and then I'm coming down. See I'm diving down into deep water and these things coming up are like kelp or seaweed and down among there there's just all kinds of colorful fish, sea turtles, coral, rock outcroppings and it's another world, it's a wonder world, it's a world of wonder. It's a world that when I went to Hawaii 15 years ago and somebody gave me some fins and mask and a wetsuit and I could dive down in worlds that were like this only real. And uh, when I was down there it was like oh my goodness the dreams and concepts that I dreamed of in the muddy Mississippi. I couldn't see this far in front of me in the muddy Mississippi but I could see a hundred feet underwater or further sometimes. And it was a world of wonder and this just symbolizes to me a whole new world that the Lord is bringing us into. It's a world that I only held in dream form or that I saw very obscurely when I was a child. But he's taking us into a world where it's vivid color. It's real now. It's not just concept but it has dynamic impact and it activates my heart, makes joy flood in my heart and soul. So just a, a little symbolic picture of uh, a reality that I think is happening in the heavenly places. So there you have it. Good. I once uh, was inspired by a guy who was a, a preacher, a guest speaker at a conference, and he says, you see, I have this, um, it was like a, uh, a loose leaf binder. He says, and I have all the prophecies that have been spoken of over me in this binder. And so I, as I'm riding along in the car, whatever, or uh, you know, if I'm riding and there's somebody's driving, I'm just reading now. What did the Lord say over me? Okay, he says, the reason for that is I want to remind myself what God thinks of me and build around me the building blocks of God's thoughts. Okay, what would it be like if you and I saved our inspirations and we created for ourselves a portfolio of the territories of inheritance that the Lord is giving us and these become our go-to when you wake up one day on the wrong side of the bed and you say ah Lord let me just look through my portfolio here and just let me see which one of these is the assignment for the day just say a couple thoughts though why is this relevant why are the last two things we talked about one is how do you turn and what do you see how do you turn and what do you see now we only use sight as one of the senses although as Jennifer pointed out she could hear music and and there uh, Linda just said she felt breezes so what we're wanting to do is be able to activate all of our senses, our golden senses. Because as we move into heavenly territory, we want to be able to be skilled at dwelling there, 
uh, traveling there, meaning traversing back and forth, and uh, eventually we're going to see ourselves more and more having authority there. And so uh, these skills of turning and seeing and developing an understanding of what our inheritance is. See, here's one more thing. So you see, um, so you see kids, you see horses, you see hearts, you see crosses, you see mountains, different things that were in our drawings. Each of those have a symbolism that becomes the language that God can speak to us through. It may not be always the language he speaks to us through, but it can become a language that the more familiar we are when we see those kinds of symbolisms again, we'll say, oh yeah, I know what that is. You see, we're learning a language of the heavenlies. We're learning how to live there with skill. And uh, it's a good journey. Okay.